Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial on rigging. This time we're actually gonna go for a uh, class simulation. Uh, so I do have the motion capture data applied data applied on my model. Okay, I'm not an animator, so I didn't really do any cleanup. Okay, but this is good, good enough for us to do our simulation. And what we're gonna do here today is gonna be simulating this jacket. All right. Now, before I uh, start doing the simulation part, I need to prepare some model to simulate because this model is actually too complicated. You see buttons and you see like thickness here, right? You have two layers of geometry. You have folding back part on the collar and the cuff, right? And you also have the pocket. Uh, it's already, um, it's also built with even the, uh, whoops, even the, uh, the hole here, right? So that's a bit too complicated to simulate. It would collapse or it would uh, lose it out really fast. So what I'm gonna do here is create a simpler model uh, to simulate. Right, now before I do that, let me show none and show just the nervous curves. That's my controllers, grab everything and go to channels, uh, channel box. I'm gonna zero out the rotation here. Uh, so then I'm back to the origin. Uh, also grab the root controller and also move it back. So that way I'm back to the binding pose. Binding po pose, right? And then let me go back to frame negative 48 uh, here. And then holding down middle mouse button, drag the timeline to negative 48, right? And then keyframe my controllers, all right? And then I'm gonna go back to frame zero you can see that's where we do have our animation. Huh, frame one, uh, frame zero is also doing that. That's interesting. I don't actually want that. I'm gonna delete that frame here. <laughs> okay, anyway, so we have frame negative 48 to frame one, right? That's where we transfer from the binding pose to the first keyframe of our animation. Uh, that's two seconds, right? Let me hold it down middle mouse button, drag from frame one to negative 40, uh, 24 here. And then I'm gonna right, middle mouse drag it there so it's not updating and keyframe it one more time over here, okay? So we have one second for the uh, for the animation to go from the binding pose to the first keyframe. Another second for it to just stay there and cool down. And then we start our animation, which will be also where we start simulating, right? And then eventually here, I'm gonna give it, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit more frame, like 200, right? Go to frame 200, just to give it some time to also settle down. That's probably too much. Uh, so the animation stops at uh, 90, so I probably need to go to 150 should be enough, okay? All right, so that's my timeline, right? From negative 48 to 150. And throughout this timeline, I will have one second to go from, again, binding pose to first keyframe, another second to go from first keyframe uh, to frame one, and then go through the animation, right? And then another one or two seconds to settle down, all right? Uh, let me show everything here. Uh, and now it's the time to start preparing our garment. Uh, let me go ahead and Control D and Shift P to get a copy of my coat. I'll call this guy uh, Proxy, right? A simpler model here. And then I'm gonna go simplify this model. Okay. So a few things I need to do here. Uh, one is I need to delete whatever that is on the inside. Okay, so let me grab that face, holding down shift and double click. Oops, to select this loop and just kick that out. Okay, and I also have the button holes, which is also something I need to go uh, get rid of. So again, select one face, holding down shift and double click the next one. And then go control red mouse button, we can go for grow selection and grow. And that should allow me to select everything I don't need and delete. Right, do the same thing for all the buttonholes. I have a bunch of buttonholes. 
uh, if you're using a different model, just go ahead and check if there's something you can simplify, right? This is all not necessary uh, to be in the simulation. Uh, they can only introduce problem, uh, not really helping, right? All right, so now they're gone. And I can also go to face mode again. I double click on this. And you can see uh, these guys, if I drag them out, they are the internal faces. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the faces again and delete those guys. Right? And for the color, I don't really want the color to be able to fold back anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this edge loop. Control and red mouse button, go for two faces and two faces to kick kick those guys out and also these guys. So just one layer should be fine for me. And here for the cuff, I'm going to do the same thing, right? Delete a loop over here and delete that. Oops, not that actually. Sorry, probably deleted the wrong loop. Okay, do that again, right? So maybe this time I'm going to go for this guy. Control and red mouse button, go for two faces, right? And get rid of that. And let's see can get rid of that, and also the thickness here. Uh, don't need that or that. Okay. And let's see what else. I, I can also go ahead and delete that. Okay, and also that. Just to make it as simple as it's do the same thing here. Uh, I could actually do this real quick, just deleting this thickness, and I should be able to, should be able to double click that to delete that entire thing. And then I can go double click here, go to face mode, and to face, right? Delete that, and then delete that. All right, cool. So that's going to be the cleanup for the, the, the color, the cuff. And moving on here, I don't really need those buttons. So let me go to face mode, double click to select, uh, you know, everything else but the buttons, holding down shift and drag over to reverse my selection, right? And then I can delete that. All right, for the buttonholes, I don't really want them to be open. So I'm gonna go merge these guys together, All right? I just hit G button when you're done with the first merge. That's gonna repeat that process when you do G button, right? All right, cool. And this guy, and this guy, oops. All right, now for the pocket, and based on how complicated your model is, you can you would spend time to actually clean it, it up. So I'm gonna go for two face, two faces. After selecting that loop, go grow selection to grow that and delete that. Okay, I'm gonna go to face mode and select this loop, delete that, and also double click here to delete that. All right, and also I don't need this thickness here either. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to merge these guys together. I could also try bridge if that's easier, I think. Yeah, doesn't matter what I do. Just make it one thin layer of geometry. Uh, oops. No. All right, and then I can double click here to fill the hole, right? And then I can go for multi-cut to do that. Or I can also grab those two and do a connect component. I think I don't have the same poly count, right? So I can actually use the Modica to here to at least connect these two. I guess that doesn't really matter because I will eventually uh, remesh it. Uh, but I need to have a thin layer of geometry to be able to get a clean remesh. All right, so that's going to be the cleanup for that part. I can I can do the same thing here real quick. All right, and then that. Go ahead and merge my points. Okay, so because uh, everything we do here is fake, so just don't try to do everything in a realistic way, right? So we don't really need to simulate what's happening on this pocket. Uh, the important thing is the, the, the overall movement, right? Especially the bottom part of the jacket, that's what's 
what matters and the others no one would really pay attention to anyways. Right. Double click and fill hole, right? And then I can go ahead and do my connect component. And when we're simulating, we don't really care if we have the correct texture or not, because we can always transfer back to our original model anyways. Okay. All right, so this is our simplified model. Right? It takes you a couple of minutes, 10 minutes or so to do the simplification, right? Now, even this is not actually very good because you can see the edge loops I have here and that's happening all of the places just because I want to have the actual thickness bumping out. Right. Uh, so this could be something the modeler want to do. But when it comes to simulation, then those becomes problem. All right. So what I need to do is actually really simplify this guy uh, by using ZBrush to do a zero measure uh, to get a simpler geometry. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that here. Go File, Export Selection. I'm going to call this guy Garment. All right, now back here to ZBrush. And then I can go for imports and uh, oops, where is it? Let me go get that again. Copy the directory so I can go here and just go there real quick. Garment, right? Drag it out, hit T button, comma to disable that. And then we can go, go ahead and do a zero measure. Uh, let me turn on the wireframe, go for geometry, zero measure here. Uh, I can do the same polycons. Or I can also specify a polygon if I wanted to. Right, it's up to you. So click there and see what's going on. You can see it's, uh, it's trying to remesh it. Uh, if you want, if you do want to have a symmetrical result, hit X to turn on symmetry, and then you do your zero measure. That's gonna give you a symmetrical result, and you just keep hitting that until zero measure gives you a simpler and simpler geometry like this. All right. So when that is done, that's when the t uh, you can bring this guy back. So I'm going to go for export and then export this guy. Oh, actually down there, turn off the group and then export our model and just override the garment and save it. All right. Uh, just to double check if we got everything correct, I could potentially delete this guy now. I don't really need it and go ahead and import the garment I got from ZBrush. Right can see this is a much even geometry and we can use this to simulate uh, and eventually uh, transfer the data back. All right, so that's the first thing we need to do, right? Prepare our model. So this is gonna be the model we'll be simulating. Now it's time to prepare the animation. Uh, animation is fairly easy. All we have to do is grab the model here that is colliding with the jacket, which is going to be which is which is going to be the head, the, the body, right? and then the uh, this this little uh, shirt or sweater here, and then I can go for a cache and alembic cache here, and I can export selection to alembic. All right, now I have some fi file here already, so I'm going to replace that animation and uh, just use the default default setting here for the time. Make sure that you have time slider and export selection over over there and I'm going to replace what I have. All right. So this is going to be the cached animation <clears throat> that I can do and make sure that you save your file uh, after that. Save this to mocap animation cached. All right. I'm going to go ahead and open a new thing just to go to the, the cache and then import the cache I cached out, this one, right? Import that. And let's play the animation. You can see uh, this is what we have, right? Make sure that it's it's, it's working. All right, but we do have a problem. Um, the simulation program we're going to use is Marvelous Designer, and Marvelous Designer doesn't like negative values for the keyframes. So let me change my timeline to 200 frames. And then I need to go ahead and uh, grab the cache we're doing here. Go to the attribute editor and you can look for that cache node. 
I'm gonna offset it uh, by 49 degree uh, frames. That way, I'm offsetting all my all my animation from negative 48 to actually frame one, and that way we're shifting the animation so that Marvel Designer would read it properly. Okay, so basically shifting the animation, right? So instead of from negative 48 to 150, it's now from one to 200. It's a little over, but that's okay, right? I, I don't really care if there's some uh, some extra frame over here. All right, and that's gonna be, again, the cache animation I want to cache again. So I'm gonna go for cache, Alembic cache, and export selection again. And this time I'm gonna save it here. It's, it's gonna be called offset 49 to indicate that this one offset it 49 uh, frames. So when I'm done with my simulation uh, and then I bring it back to Maya, I will shift it 49 backwards, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Okay. All right, so now we have our model prepared. We have our animation cached. It's the time to move on to the next video and we can talk about how we bring those things into Marvelous. All right, see you next time.